Good afternoon, I'm Patrick Lay and today I'm in Hampshire. Soccer fans everywhere, you would have heard this. And even this. And you may have guessed they belong to a man who's missed Pompey Matches, a rare and a total eclipse. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Patrick. Please tell us your full name and what you do for a living. No, my full name is John Anthony Porks from Football Club Westwood, and I'm an antiquarian bookseller. Oh, wonderful, yes. So there can't be a fan in English football anywhere that won't recognise the unmistakable sounds of Mr. Porks from Football Club. Can you remember the first game you took them to? Oh, God, they, they, I can't remember them when I first took the instruments, but I've been going to Pompey for years, but they just sort of came about. It used to be a wooden rattle I used to first take. I think I remember that, yes. yes. Yeah, that's right, and then took the bell, and then the bugle, and it's just like in the 90s, basically. Oh, I see, so good sort of 25 years, probably. Much oh, yeah. yeah, easy. So, I mean, are there any other forms of memorabilia that you collect? Because um, I may be inclined to brand you as an avid Pompey fan, so I presume you have one or two things. I collect everything Pompey. I mean, even my, put it this way, my bicycle has got ports of number plates. Oh, really? I've got number plates on my car, I've got carpets, scarves, hats, phones, anything. Anything you can think of, I collect. I mean, I, when I'm at work, I'm dressed up in ports of. Oh, well, do you take it to work as well? Yeah, so. well, I just, I just, you know, I wear a shirt and a type of blue and white striped shirt, blue, royal blue waistcoat, blue trousers, um, and then when I'm at play, I wear what I'm wearing now, and when I'm at football, I wear the idiot gear with the clown boots <laughs> and the big hat and the all that hat sort of and everything. Stuff, yeah, yeah, so. So, so, do you have any superstitions, like, on the day itself, or any lucky mascots you also take to the game? No, I've never been really superstitious, uh, um, uh, but, you know, you make your own luck really and that's that's down to the players to be superstitious are actually just to go there have a few beers and watch the game in your early days of going to Fratton Park um, were there other characters like, like yourself now who were renowned for getting the crowd going oh there were plenty of characters following Pompey I mean that's uh, I'm a mishmash of a lot of them basically I mean you had your dog meat Jones you had um, Phil Oaks you had you had lots of people Johnny Moore and you had um, Mitches and all this type of stuff and all these people who followed Pompey over the years and they're all characters in their own right they all like singing they all like to drink and uh, I've sort of um, taken bits from all of them and uh, but there's still many many characters who follow Pompey now oh absolutely I, I just stick out a bit more than most but I'm no more passionate and no more of a fan than they are all right okay so there is plenty of contenders I could spring to mind uh, for your uh, favourite ever Pompey game, but do you have a season which you'd say was your most memorable? Oh, season that was most memorable, you know, there's so many to choose from. I think it's got to be obviously promotion to the Premiership and, mm. and uh, how you read that, some of the football we played and some of the scores we got, and you know, we were scoring for fun. Yeah, and every game and, it looked like they were going to win, didn't it? Yeah, Going into every game expecting to. That's right, and it was to the promised land, which turned out not to be the promised land, but at the Eventually. end of the day it was, it was exciting. Absolutely. And I think we're going to see another exciting season this mm -hmm. year under Paul Cook. So. Which will, another point I was going to go on to in a second actually. Favourite ever Pompey player, it's got to be Adam Knight, just because he encompasses everything about Portsmouth. Uh, the loyalty, the longevity of him, and uh, the things he does for the community. He's always worked in the community. He's he has, hasn't he? done tireless amount for the community. He's always here, there and everywhere. Even when he wasn't with the club, and a few years ago when he was at other, other clubs. He was he in was, Dallas, wasn't he? For a, yeah, for a spell, right. but he was he? still doing things for Porks, and if he goes to funerals for people, and he's just, he represents Pompey. He was a hard yeah. drinker in his younger days, just like the fans. And he's one of us. But Alan Knight, I mean, he's got the MBE, and he, he encompasses everything about Pompey, the fans, and everything. You know, he loves the club. He's yeah. an absolute legend in the area. An absolute legend, you without know, a doubt. As you say, it's the stuff he does for the community as well mm. as the, I think it was 801 games, I think he played. 801 games, a fantastic yeah. goalkeeper. And he could have gone to other places, but he stayed with us, and uh, he was just brilliant. Like you say, but it's just the passion, the loy, and uh, that just sums up the Pompey fans. I would say so, definitely. So for you to, to miss a Pompey match, that, that must be a serious last resort. What exactly would that take to happen? Uh, death. <laughs> In a word? Mm. Yeah, I, f I physically won't go to, not go to a game. Um, I've even asked my mates as I'm older, you know, if I'm infirm in a wheelchair, they've got to push me along. So No, it'll, it'll be death, basically, or, or incapacitated. So, but I, w I will go as long as I can. Do you see one day someone else taking over your iconic role in the franchise? Well, I'm not iconic in my eyes, I'm just a fan the same as everyone else. So That's very, very modest of you to say. At the end of the day, I'm just a fan and uh, once, I, you know, once I'm gone, I'm gone, simple as that. 
Do you find that um, over the years it's, it's been a, a, a club which has changed a lot? Uh, this season, you know, eight games into the year, 2015-16, a great draw at Oxford yesterday, 1-1, still unbeaten. Do you find over the years where we've spent a lot of money, um, we've been chasing the sort of a dream? Should, should the position we're in, us, capitalise on that in the new year and spend more money? Or do you think now the money really should be spent on the infrastructure? We're in a good well, position, aren't we, under Paul Cook at the moment? It's a fantastic position under Paul Cook, and they have been spending money on the infrastructure. I mean, the fans have seen to that with the uh, crowd funding for the academy, you know, for the reserve, uh, for the training pitches and the academy it's pitches. It's a wonderful story, what's happening. And relaying the pitch and all this sort of stuff, all the basic infrastructure that should have been done when the millions were swimming around in the Premiership. Now we're a fan-owned based club, a fan-owned club, they're actually doing what should have been done. It's like going back 30 years, having a club that was owned by a rich local owner mm. did it for his love for the club and that's what the fans so are doing what now. we've always wanted I think for such a long time and um, for me I think it's great all the money's been spent on the infrastructure mm. now really and of course Cook has spent a bit this summer but uh, I mean what we have heard in the league at the moment um, you're quite hopeful that we can go up this year I'm really excited but if I'm honest um, from what I've seen the way the team plays we play to a team structure um, we dominate games, we go out, we pressurise them, when we lose the ball, we hunt in packs, get it back. I've never seen team play like that consistently from a Pompey team. Even in the Premiership, we never had that sort of team structure. We had better players, obviously, and uh, and they used to play well in that respect, but never such a structured team. And I, It's so exciting. It's very reminiscent of Liverpool in the 70s and 80s, mm. and obviously Cook being a Liverpool fan, he's implementing that philosophy. Oh, is it right? I wasn't sure yeah, which, uh, which, which kind in, of the... On implementing the that philosophy, so it's really exciting. There's a long way to go yet. The team are getting to know each other, but as far as I can see, we're third, as you said, we're third in the table, unbeaten, and we can only get better because they're still getting to know each other. They've only, you know, they've only been playing eight games together. That's it, isn't it? Eight games and still unbeaten. And still unbeaten and and would... with a team that didn't know each other a few no, months ago. No, I think there's a lot of very much mm. um, things to look forward to in the new year and let's hope in May that uh, we will, a bit like Northampton ironically in 1980, that was the uh, game where we got promoted out mm. of that league. Spookily enough, we're playing them on the last day of the season. Don't want to tempt fate, but uh, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Football's a funny old game and lots of coincidences have happened, but I'm just going to take each game as it comes. It's enjoyable with the watch pump at the moment. The football's great. You can see they're trying. We've got a fantastic manager. Think, he's already yeah, got he's proven, been very proven impressive, hasn't he, so far? He's got proven credentials at that level. You know, he's won, He's taken Chesterfield up. He nearly got promoted last year with Chesterfield, but he's had success with other teams in lower divisions. And he knows that's uh, the football, and I think we can grow with him, and he can even get better with us. The players we bring in, I expect obviously we will bring um, players in in January if we think we need to strengthen and over the long course of the season there's going to be injuries and things like that. Um, but you never know, it's, uh, it's just exciting and it's great and it's great to not have to worry about the off-field problems we had, as we had before and to be actually a football club that's challenging for honours, we haven't done that for five or six years. No, I was going to say it's the first time I think we've really truly smiled mm. as a club again, really probably since we won the FA Cup yeah, I would yeah. argue. That's so. fantastic and the support is just incredible. Yeah, 16,000 games 16. in the League 2. And it's unbelievable, it's not another club like it, it really is a proper old fashioned football club. Um, I think there's plans, you know, to upgrade the stadium in future yes, years. Yes, I hear there is. Yeah, I think there's there's a bit of room to manoeuvre now, isn't there? Yeah. With, with and it's that. exciting. It's um, way forward. And now we are a beacon of light for lots of other clubs that are going to be in a similar position to us financially, that we're in in administration. As but now these other clubs know that. A, a club of Pompey stature, or they, you know, can be bought by the fans. Yes, so good from, template, I would say. So from being a, so from being a, a little bit of an embarrassment, we couldn't pay creditors and all this sort of stuff. People owe money. We're now a beacon of light for a lot of clubs to follow. As is the case with Pompey, we're always leaders in something, whether it be passion, whether it be football, anything. Pompey are always at the forefront, especially with the fans. And everyone goes on about the twelfth man, but Pompey really are the twelfth man. Yeah. It's always, it's always they've bought the club, they've saved it, they've done this, they've done that, and, and the fans continue to back the club, not just on the pitch or you know in the stands, but with the crowdfunding for the training facilities, the academy things, and they, they've done so much. The fans are just unbelievable. Oh, I think so as well. Well, John, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Please do so. Portsmouth Football Club everyone.
We've had a wonderful chat here, and um, I'm certainly looking forward to the second half of this season when it kicks in. And we've only had eight games, kind of think of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from Petersfield, a very good day to you all.